I hope the section so far in terms of using MCM for your brand or for your portfolio uh, was able to add some value in terms of uh, what are the key considerations so that you can have a successful MCM program. Now I would come to the last section wherein few case studies uh, of what we have done in the US market, APAC market, and Indian market. I would share with you. Here is an example, a very successful program that was run by one of the top five pharma companies in the field of oncology. The product was uh, in the field uh, for uh, management of breast cancer. The brief was very simple. They said, we have this product, we need to differentiate in a highly competitive oncology market. And the incumbents were very, very well entrenched. So what is so different that this company could do? They came to us with this kind of a brief. And we suggested to them, and by the way, this was not something which we did last year. This is an old example, I would say almost uh, four years ago, we had, con uh, we had done this program in the US market. And this is to increase engagement with oncologists and other stakeholders. The result was a really very, I would say, 3D environment, very interactive, wherein the participants could go, see different sections. There were patient cases, interactive patient cases. There were KOL videos. There were other e-modules. All in all, it was content which was highly engaging and relevant to the practice of the doctors. Otherwise, why would senior oncologists who are super specialists bother to even come to such a portal? In addition to having this online engagement, the same VOC, Virtual Oncology Center, was available for the reps to detail using their uh, tablets. So when they went, I mean, tablets in those days, they used even the laptops with the convertible uh, screen, not the iPad. So they could go to the doctor, they could use one of the patient cases or a QL video. And in fact, there was a marked increase in the amount of time doctors were willing to spend with the, uh, with the medical reps when they started detailing from the VOC. As you can see over here, time spent by the reps increased by 4.5 minutes. Physicians spent on an average nine minutes on this portal. And it was also rolled out to no excess patients in the US. In fact, it was uh, a big success and the company decided to roll out in another nine markets in forms of uh, localization and uh, translated versions. Here is the, another example of a fully integrated multi-channel marketing promotional program that we did. It has the elements of televideo detailing, email marketing, and it was to supplement medical reps' efforts, plus also to reach out the white space doctors. It had web-based content. So all in all, most of the elements of MCM were used in this particular program. And as you can see over here, the total number of interactions were to the tune of 23,000 and plus. And what I mean by interactions over here is that the emails that were sent to the uh, participants, they opened it. So that is the kind of, uh, they, they opened it and read the message. And deep engagement is when they could connect with the uh, remote detailing person who could do the live video detailing. So that's a deep engagement, not just a superficial one. From the same uh, program, you can see that because we used a hybrid or I would say an amalgamation of both the medical reps and a remote detailing, there was the field person or the sales force efforts were, uh, I mean, the time spent by the medical rep in clinic detailing increased when it was done after the remote detailing. So s earlier also I had emphasized that the need of medical rep cannot be undermined. It's only that we have to educate them also that all these multiple channels are there to strengthen your efforts uh, uh, when you are meeting the doctors and detailing to them. And this is a classic example of this.
This is an example of a high science new product launch and uh, this is a program which was uh, done in uh, the APAC region excluding Japan and Taiwan but uh, most other countries in APAC were part of this program. And uh, the reach was also pretty high, more than 15,000 doctors, physicians, and uh, you had uh, uh, super specialists, neurologists, also part of this particular program. There was an inbound and outbound support through virtual MSL. So this is again your televideo detailing platform was used. And then very, very highly interactive content that was leveraged. If you can see over here, out of 15,000 doctors who were initially approached for the program, 7,000 plus doctors engaged and we measured this KPI in terms of doctors who not only registered but were engaging and seeing the content on a regular basis. So that's why you see, which is a very, I would say, uh, element of a highly successful program. Repeat visits in 12 months and then the uh, increase in prescriptions. So all those parameters were very, very closely while designing the program beforehand, uh, we go in detail and we develop the entire KPIs, metrics, success factors along with the client. And they were uh, met over there. So, sorry. So here you can see that uh, there are, these are some of the snapshots, I would say. You had e-detailing component because it was a new product. There was mechanism of action. Videos were put in. KOL videos were put in. Webinars, e-invites, and e-mailers. So in fact, from the uh, another thing in the e-mailers was that uh, the KOL videos were embedded in it. So that's how, again, some of the statistics from the same program, as you can see, average time spent on different uh, kind of uh, content assets, and uh, the open rate for some of the emails that were sent. One thing which is very, uh, you know, noteworthy in the previous uh, example is that this was done uh, in, uh, in a blend of, I would say, developed markets and the emerging markets in APAC. So you had Singapore and Australia which are developed and you also have uh, Malaysia or Thailand which are uh, emerging markets, I would say. Despite that, it was a fairly successful program. This is for uh, an OTC kind of a brand which had already become sort of an OTC, I would say, not strictly OTC brand, and in the Turkey market. And we leveraged our MCM engagement platform to run this campaign. And again, it was a low cost engagement plan that was uh, done for the doctors in Turkey. It started off as a pilot. In fact, the case study is about the pilot that was done. And from the pilot, today it has become a full-blown program. So the client actually wanted to test it out in a set of uh, 600 doctors. So that's what we could achieve, show the proof of concept, and then it has uh, gone to the next level. So this is the typical example. If you recall, in my previous slide, I had uh, shown you product lifecycle and digital or uh, in-clinic uh, kind of thing. So therein, the product has already gone beyond the uh, stage of uh, patent and uh, then patent expiry. So that is why doctors are well aware about the brand. Company did not want to spend too much time and uh, money on uh, promoting it. And here you have a low cost uh, alternate channel solution. Last is the example I'm sharing with you of very a successful program from India uh, with one of the top five MNCs. This program actually, it started off, again, the company wanted to make, to differentiate themselves from the other competitors. And they said they want to have a comprehensive knowledge portal. Today, it is in the sixth year of its running more than 50,000 doctors are enrolled in it. Content is being updated on a regular basis. So some of the key points I'm telling you how this can become a program. And then newer elements and channels have been added. So it started off as a web portal. 
Today you also have mobile apps being created and there is uh, also uh, the, the client is uh, now wants to launch a patient mobile app for this particular portal. So line extensions as they do in the FMCD industry. So that kind of a stuff uh, can also be done in very, very smartly in the case of pharma. So th these different elements are currently being used. Mobile app for patients is not yet launched, but uh, soon it should be launched as well. So some of the snapshots from this one. Again, in this program, you would have seen that none of the programs that I have, case studies I have showed you were uh, keeping the medical reps isolated from the program. Whether it was VOC or the program which I showed you about APAC or this one, in all these programs, sales reps played a very critical role because they were the people who went to the doctors and they spoke about the program and rolled the doctors into the ECME or the program per se. You need to take consent of the doctors if you're sending them emails and all that. So they, they're in engaging them, educating them is something which we did along with the client organization. Again, some statistics, uh, these are slightly dated ones. Uh, it's already crossed 50,000. And you can see, you know, the growth of mobile usage, I mean, uh, through the mobile uh, access to this particular portal is increasing. That's something which is uh, encouraging. I mean, it's not that the portal is not there. So the company is still investing. You, you, do, you don't say that, okay, now mobile is going to be important. I will shut down my website uh, online. No, that's not the right thing. You keep all these different channels, as I have earlier also emphasized. You cannot selectively choose something because clients may use it based on their preferences. Some people would like to access it from their smartphones. Some people would still like to use their desktops and uh, view the, uh, the material that is available. This brings me to the last slide. So all in all, so far what I have been sharing with you is based on my interactions with senior industry folks, digital marketing, marketing folks in US, Europe, and other markets. And some of them is also based on what we at Indigene believe could be the possible ways of having a successful MCM program rollout. Whether you are doing an enterprise-wide, whether you are doing it at the brand level. Most important thing is that the customers today are already using these things. They are ready. We don't have to educate them. You tell me which doctor needs to be educated today to use a smartphone or to use a website. I think that education is not needed. They are already ready for it. So market is ripe for us to go there, put our, uh, plan our strategy well, and then execute it. It's not a matter of either or. Again, I'm emphasizing here. Today, many uh, marketeers, they talk to me and they say that, uh, you know, I will wait and watch. Now, wait and watch can be a very tricky situation because while you are waiting and watching, your competitor is already working on maybe launching a pilot in multi-channel. So that is, I tell them that finally it is your decision, your call. So point that I would like to drive home over here is that it is up to you, each one of you to decide how you would like to roll out, in which brand you would like to run the pilot, how long you would like to run the pilot, and in what, which segment you would like to run the pilot. Second important point would be that there is no one best channel. I think I had emphasized it enough and more. Definitely, Salesforce is part of this channel mix. Salesforce is not mutually exclusive out of this channel mix, because somewhere, we start thinking the moment it is multi-channel, it means it is non-medical rep. That's a myth. That's a wrong supposition. We, we need to, first of all, clear that. Medical reps are definitely part of the MCM overall communication mix. Quality is obviously very, very critical. So what kind of 
strategy you put in place, what kind of content assets you do. Now content just cannot be for the sake of it. Most of us go to Facebook because the content is getting generated on a regular basis. It's a very dynamic thing. We go to LinkedIn because of that. We go to the portal of the news websites that we have because just imagine, do we bother to even uh, read a newspaper which is one day old? We never do that. The websites are the content. I'm not saying in medical parlance we have to uh, uh, say uh, update the content on an hourly basis, but at least the content cannot be that uh, the, the brand has some two-year-old content and then the doctor says, what will I do there? It has to be a strategy has to be there around content. How frequently would you be updating it? How would you be notifying the doctors about it? So that is and obviously the quality in terms of interactivity of the content. It just cannot be uh, one way traffic of communication. In terms of uh, being pervasive in all the channels, there is always a temptation to be present in each one of them, but uh, that can even uh, become a kind of noise. So we have to keep in mind that what is the quality of engagement? That is very critical. And that is what will be part of your initial analysis and when you are talking out your MCM brand strategy. Lastly, you look at any sector, any industry around yourself, be it aviation or airlines booking or banking, anyone. I mean, I don't have to start giving the whole laundry list here. We all use it. Look at the different channels they have deployed for the ease of their customers. And pharma, in most of the advanced or the, I would say, developed market, they are already using these channels. I'm sure in Japanese market, uh, more and more of the adoption of MCM will take place. They are slightly, uh, that's my uh, understanding, and I think uh, Ono-san can correct me on that, uh, in terms of being a little bit behind the curve when it comes to, say, the US pharma market. But it's, it's not a catch-up game or something. We will keep waiting for them to perform or wait to hear what happens good in the West. That only we will adopt over here. Good practices are out there. You need to look at them, see what are the best practices that can be adapted to the local requirements. In fact, one of the very major global program that we are doing with uh, one of the top three pharma companies. It is a remote detailing program. There, lot of local adaptations have been done. So we need to keep in mind that there is a local flavor to whatever we do. What, uh, what is uh, acceptable to the local market needs to be kept in mind when designing your MCM strategy. So at this, I will take a pause.